compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Criminal number five. A loud knock on the door. Open up, hostess. The table was laid in a few minutes, and now the head of the family treats the traveler with hot tea. His guards probably dine in another room. The house is warm from the oven and from the spiritual conversations of the two strangers. The governor of one of the districts, of the Bukayev Horde, was a great Russian and writer of world renown, who had returned from years in exile in Siberia. The story became a family legend, and one more legend in North Kazakhstan. There is a legend that Chernyshevsky drove by our city. Nikolai Chernyshevsky, meeting with Valikhanov, where correspondence has gone, and how criminal number five came to be in the Kazakh steppes. Chernyshevsky, during a meeting with Shokhan Valikhanov, was curious about the life of the people, the ordinary people's lives. When Chernyshevsky came, he stayed at the Azerbaijans. In our family, a large Azerbaijan family, we get this information from older members of the family. Chapter 1. Unfulfilled Plans St. Petersburg, 1861. He knew him vicariously through friends, articles, and the favorite contemporary magazine. And here, Shokan already catches a cab. The meeting did take place, Valikhanov visiting Chernyshevsky. What a wonderful man this Chernyshevsky is, and how well that he knows not only the life of the Russians. After I talked to him, I finally strengthened in the sense that we will be lost without education, lost in despotism and darkness. Nikolai Chernyshevsky, our friend, from notes of Shokhan Valikhanov. In his notes, the scientists left only impressions, but much was discussed. Perhaps they agreed on their next meeting. Shokhan planned to come to St. Petersburg again, not only once. Meeting with Chernyshevsky predetermined somehow the final views of Shokhan Valikhanov. They did not even suggest that not one of them would see the city in the near future. The weave of destiny, if not for the mysterious death of Valikhanov, they would have met in the homeland of Shokhan. The history of this unfortunate accident. May the 27th, 1703, the first bastion of the Petro Pavel fortress was set down, named after Peter I. With this, the city construction began. Thunderstorms come from here, Swedes. Peter the Great did not have to. The military citadel was never used for this purpose. After a few years, after the founding of the Petropavl fortress, it was used as a prison for political prisoners, and the first was Alexei Petrovich, son of Peter I. No one knew about the main state prison in the walls of the fortress, even those who served in it. The secret house, Alexis Ravelin, a construction that was placed before the moat between the bastions. The building of the prison has not been preserved. However, the names of those who came here still live in history. Decembrists, Petrashevsky, Dostoevsky, and Bukunin. In 1862, the next enemy of the empire, Nikolai Chernyshevsky, was brought into the secret house. Dear friend, Yalichka, I told you about the rumors. If I will be arrested, please know in advance this will not work, because I not only am not connected to any business, but there's no way to confuse me in any case. December the 7th, 1862. A letter from Nikolai Chernyshevsky to his wife.
He was arrested just for the thoughts and the influence of these thoughts on others. Most likely the outcome is not far, he wrote, and was wrong. For over 678 days of arrest, Chernyshevsky even managed to write his most famous novel, What Should I Do? This book was published, but nothing was found by censorship. In 1864, the civil penalty and sentence of hard labor was over. After 19 years, he's still allowed to go back, but not to St. Petersburg. Chapter 2. People and Time. North Kazakhstan. The oldest archive and one of the most unexplored pages in Chernyshevsky's life. On the road and off-road. From the far north to Sochi Astrakhan. The route and the identity of criminal number five, as Chernyshevsky was named in official correspondence, were classified. Sometimes guards had no idea who and where he was driven. When the revolutionaries, social democrats, after arrest were sent to Siberia, there is evidence that they passed through Petropavlovsk. Late at night, in the rainy times of October 1883, on the Siberian highway, from Omsk to Petropavlovsk, strange travelers came. In the carriage spattered with road mud, except the driver, there were two strong policemen. Between them, on the straw, sheltered, lay something indefinite, not luggage, but a person in the crooked position. From the notes of local historian Sergei Prisnyakov. According to his relatives, Chernyshevsky, despite the hard labor, did not complain about his health. Perhaps he was affected by fatigue of an uncomfortable journey. Chernyshevsky kept quiet, most, and isolated. First, the carriage drove up to the police unit in Petropavlovsk to register. That's the building of the police department. It was the first building on the mountain. The city was located in the foothills. Interestingly, there are no mountains, and we have an expression. Mountain and foothill. This is the high bank of the Ishim River. According to the instructions, only the most senior police officers could meet with Chernyshevsky. Leaving the control limits of the unit was prohibited. I must say that in the 19th century, the city is still not very large, but it is a commercial city, a city of merchants. Here at that time, banks functioned, industry was small but active. They sent a coded telegram to Petropavlov's governor saying he must take the necessary measures to prevent disruption of public order. Each officer tried as soon as possible to get rid of him, and at the same time quickly reported to the top. So, news about the unknown shattered in an instant, as it usually happens in any provincial town. The arrival of the famous convict could not be hidden. Many newspapers had even issued an article. I was told a curious episode connected with this open secret which surrounded Chernyshevsky's departure from Siberia. The mail was sent in a few hours. The postman, like everyone else in town, knew that Chernyshe was coming and wanted to curry favor. He warned his superiors. Thus, they saw the detachment with an important offender caught in a transit ready with horses and coachmen in ceremonial costumes. Vladimir Korolenko, Memoirs of Chernyshevsky. Often the important secret guest was hosted by the head of the city or district. At least the writer Korolenko told us about such a case. And if Valikhanov was alive, he would surely know about the arrival of the writer. Despite the ban, many in Petropavlovsk wanted to meet Chernyshevsky. They did not let him talk to people, 
simply wasn't allowed. He went into the tent under the supervision of a police officer. So wait, he's already returned from exile and still the same? Nevertheless, they thought that he could suddenly say something and people will become revolutionaries. Details of the secret voyage to North Kazakhstan is not found in the archive yet. And there is another legend associated with the name of Chernyshevsky. Chapter 3. The Hospitable Region. The two months' exhausted journey was coming to an end. A brief stop in his native Saratov, meeting with his wife. And now, he was already coming to Astrakhan. The travelers go through the land of the Bukayev hordes. Needless to say, he left everything and traveled light, gallop night and day. He did not seem very tired and assures us that it's so. He was in a hurry, a real hurry. He said, till it's dry and warm, dear, I need to get there. From a letter of his wife, Olga Chenishevskaya. Autumn came into full force, the end of October, and he, in spite of being used to the Siberian cold, regretted that he'd left behind his warm clothes. Was this a planned stop, or the travelers just wanted to get warm? He moved through the Orda and stopped at the house of our relative Jaras. Jaras Azabayev was a district governor. He was a very serious, respected and educated governor. Photos of the hospitable host have not been preserved, and the most important evidence of any meetings corresponds also. The Astrakhan and Saratov archives could not help us in search, but descendants have not stopped to search for documentary evidence of the family legend. Here is another detail of the meeting. In the morning, they had to go when our father saw that he had a very thin coat, and he gave him his coat. We have this legend. Chernyshevsky arrived to Astrakhan and sent a thankful letter to the Azerbaijans. Since then, correspondence started. And in a city on the Volga, they have met several times. He spent six years under strict police surveillance. Three agents monitored the movement of guests and the writer. They had correspondence. Several letters were kept in the family. But the 30s caused a certain blow to the family, and they suffered a lot, and the letters have since disappeared. There is even a fact that Makash, the governor, and Azabai, Jaras Azabai, had correspondence with Chernyshevsky himself. The scientist and ethnographer Makash Bekmukambetov is very respected in the Museum of Komangazi. He helped the Akin to move freely. The Astrakhan governor, Makash, wrote a letter and interceded for the Akin. He is familiar with him, heard him play on the Dombra, and he knew it was a really creative great man. It is unclear how Makash, Bek Mukambetov, and Nikolai Chernyshevsky met in Astrakhan, most likely through Jaras Azabayev. But historians have found out an interesting detail. The head of the district achieved the incredible. He received permission and took the writer to visit his house for five days. Epilogue. The unknown about the well-known. Slow walks through the city of Astrakhan. He liked and talked about the people, events, and times. Many years of prison did not have any effect on his beliefs. To confuse agents, they started to talk in Kazakh. The author's language base allowed him to do so. During the years of his stay in Astrakhan, he showed a lot of interest in the Kazakh language and can speak it well. 
the unknown about the well-known. As a child, Chernyshevsky learned Tatar. He even wrote poetry in it. He knew other languages of Turkic origin, Yakut, for example, the perfectly mastered Arabic writing. And apparently, in Astrakhan, he repeatedly took guests from the Kazakh steppe. Only no mention of this has been found. The writer simply burned the majority of his notes.